I'd like to describe to you one of the biggest obstacles beginners experience in tone production. You're going to hear over and over again the keys to tone production is bow weight, bow speed, and bow placement or sounding point. But within those keys there's certain obstacles that get in the way of bow speed, bow weight, and bow placement. The biggest obstacle to tone production for beginners, I think, is the crooked bow. And it's not easy to learn to draw a perfectly straight bow because it's not natural on the violin. So I'm going to show you straight bow versus crooked bow and I'm going to hopefully show you something that will surprise you regarding where your arm actually goes to create a straight bow and then I'll give you a few exercises that you can do to work on this important skill. Okay, I like to start on the A string or the E string because each string is different. The straight bow requires different different uh, geometry with your arm to create a straight bow on every string. A string and E string is the easiest, so start with those. Um, let me show you what happens when you draw a straight bow all the way out to the tip. Actually, let's do the D string. This will be extra. Uh, this will make the point even stronger. Okay, my bow is straight, correct? Yes, it's parallel to the bridge. Now, I am going to not move a muscle. I'm just going to remove my bow and look where my arm is. My arm is straight out front as if I wanted to reach out and grab my metronome or help myself to a piece of chocolate. You reach out in front of you when you bow a down bow if you want a straight bow. The problem is we perceive that our bow is going across the front of our body so we want to make our arm go across the front of our body and that just creates a big old nasty crooked bow. Instead reach straight out front and look you have a straight bow. Now, like I said, it's slightly different for each string. So this is the biggest tip I have to give to you, and I make all of my private students do it. In fact, I've, I've got a mirror right behind the camera right now. It's just a mirror is part of violin practice, and it still is for me, believe it or not. Sometimes I have to tune it up a little bit. So practice in a mirror. Practice your A string for a week. Practice drawing a perfectly straight bow down bow. All the way to the tip because it's when you get to the tip that your bow is going to want to go around the corner. Reach out front, freeze, look in the mirror, close your eyes and memorize that sensation and then try to break away from the mirror and do a couple of bow strokes and then try to surprise yourself. Just say freeze and check and see how you did. A lot of times you'll have to fix it, but sometimes you'll nail it and you'll get better and better. Then the next week work on just your D string. I know that when I'm teaching my students, I start them on the A string and the E string only. They do not go to the D and the G string for quite a while. That's a Suzuki um, approach. I also start my students in the upper half of the bow only. They don't even go past into the lower half of the bow for the first five or six months. That's also a Suzuki concept. And that's because the geometry is way different in the upper half than it is in the lower half. And I don't want to confuse my students. I want them to get good at one thing, then we add another thing. So let's talk briefly about the lower half of the bow. The lower half of the bow, as you're approaching the frog on an up bow, Look at my wrist. We have to kink the wrist as if we were looking at a wristwatch. Not a lot, and you don't drop your elbow down like this into the praying mantis position. You want to keep it natural and beautiful 
and you don't want to kink anything because that just disrupts the flow of energy and the balance of weight. So, but it is a fact, if I don't bend my wrist a little bit, the tip of my bow is gonna head around the back of my head and smack me in the head. And I would deserve it. <laughs> to prevent that from happening, as you go up bow and as you approach the frog, you bend your wrist a little bit this way. As you go out to the tip, watch the wrist will go the other way. Do you see that? So this is a tip position, and this is a frog position. Tip, frog. All right, so keep that in mind, and that will greatly help your straight bow as well. But I think the, the most helpful thing is going to be practicing in a mirror and treating each string differently. That's two things. And the third thing is being aware that it's different in the upper half than it is in the lower half. All right, now, greasy elbow is the term that I coined for using your elbow instead of the shoulder. Some people act like they've got rust in their elbows and they don't work their elbows. They try to do it all with their shoulder. That's kind of inseparable from the straight bow. If you don't have a greasy elbow, you're not gonna get a straight bow. But I'm going to put that in a different video, which will follow right after this one. So I'll see you in the greasy elbow discussion.